Hey everybody, I have a new book for you today. This one is a little different. It's not a coloring book. It is a mastering colored pencil book. Um, this is by Lisa Dinehofer. Hope I pronounced your name right. And it is by Monticello Studios. It it says it's a practical reference for artists and it will give you instruction all the instructions and inspiration you need to expand your knowledge of the materials teach you to really see sharpen your skills master your understanding of color and enhance your drawing with this magical medium being the colored pencils and since almost all of us coloring book fans use the coloring um the colored pencils i thought this was a really good book a good reference book to have and I have been reading it for several days now and I, and I just have to say that I really really enjoy it and I, I learned a lot going through it um, first off the book is really nice quality it's heavy duty um, really beautiful cover I mean I just love the colors I can't tell you how pretty the colors are in this book um, and this is all colored pencils believe it or not so it goes through, let's get started, just another one of those books to add to your collection. It's got the table of contents here, and look at this beautiful colored cherry, um, cherries in this glass, isn't that gorgeous? Um, we've had, I mean, you have a ton of contents in here. There's so many. It, you know, it was so from the beginning to practical to practical considerations to homework assignments. Yes, homework. And we start off with um, the introduction to colored pencils. And her class contributed to all these uh, pictures as well. New medium. You just have to start. She goes to your basic supply list. Um, the colored pencils here. I like this. It says, um, I would like to make this clear. You can and should experiment with different pencils and choose those that work the best for you. No one says your pencils have to come from just one or two companies. You may need to combine different pencils from different companies to get the effects you need. Yay, because I'm always shopping for new pencils. <laughs> um, it is not unusual in art supplies such as oil paints for the name of the color to change with one manufacturer to the others. So for example, one pencil may be called ultramarine and another pencil may be called blue marine in a different set, but they are the same color. So you got to watch out for that. I, I like how they give you these tips. Very, very helpful. So first off, we go to a pencil comparison chart and they give you the key to the chart up here. Um, like Prismacolor Premier, um, Prisma Very Thins, and they just show you um, first is the pe colored pencil itself, and then the pencil plus white in the middle, and then the pencil with a solvent or water on the last. Um, I just marked off the one, you know, the pencils that I have because I want to try this, and then they give you a blank spot so you can do it yourself, which I really like. So you can test your own. Um, mediums your own pencils on here and then they show you different things that you can have that are extra right, now we go into the graphite pencils for drawing the colorless blender pencils here is the graphite pencil chart with the the blending with the colorless blender and then she goes into different types of paper which is we always talking about paper when you're talking about coloring books and coloring in general we're always talking about paper um, so she goes into uh, real deep she goes into different qualities of paper textures the sizing the weight it says papers come in a variety of weights ranging from copy copier paper at 20 pounds to 300 pound heavy duty sheets that feel like thick pieces of mat board the heavier the paper the thicker and sturdier it is and the more it can handle heavier papers are thicker to the touch and a good one can accommodate a multitude of techniques including water solvents embossing layering and many erasers um, so then we got rough, cold press, hot press, 90 pound, 140 pound, and 300 pounds. It's very, very interesting. All right. She gives you some examples on different papers. And these are just some, you know, 
auxiliary uh, supplies that you could use. Um, you know, the kneaded erasers, the Stadler plastic, the little pen eraser. I have this one and it is great. And then she goes about the different types of sharpeners. And this is a really good tip right here. It says when you're buying individual pencils, inspect the end of the pencil for centered leads. An off-center lead will never sharpen properly. Let me see if you can see that. See the right and the wrong? I have a few like that and let me tell you they're a pain in the butt. And then they tell you about pencil extenders and how to use super glue to glue when you get down to a little tiny bit on your pencil to glue it to another pencil. Um, and just how to do that and extenders they go into that and they go into all the different solvents and masking fluids I've never tried that but she goes into detail about all of these um, things artist tape um, the masking fluid tracing paper artist tape and then we have alternate alternatives are sources and supplies you know makeup sponges and um, certain things this is Chinese white watercolor and acrylic white paint isn't that cool the picture and look at this her um her studio set up doesn't that look like all of our stuff just pencils everywhere I just want to dig it and play and this is her um, pic uh, picture called Lunar Eclipse. I think that's really pretty. And then we got chapter two, pencil vocabulary, learning about your colored pencils. The only limit to success with this medium are self-imposed. Once you've experienced what the pencils can do, push, push, push again. Allow the pencils to surprise you and experiment. She gives great tips in this book. And then we have the Achieving Different Pencil Techniques. This one is graphite pencils, wax pencils, watercolor pencils. And then right here, this is where it's been burnished with the blending, um, the colorless blender. And it says, study all four renditions. Each is different. Each embodies a different feel, a different atmosphere. Choosing the technique depends on the mood you want to portray in your drawing. Or coloring and on this page is all about blending burnishing and solvents all of these are prismacolors and they give the color names at the bottom I know you really can't see that very well but these are burnished with um, the blending pencil this one is blended with a white pencil and these right here you can see the bottom these are done with other colors like cream French gray 10% cool gray and sky blue so they go into how the effects of how things look the different techniques and here this is solvents okay for this chapter it's creating coloring pencil grids all right and it tells you your supplies you need what you want to do you know why you want to do it and then she goes in to show you all of the different types of grids. The red, warm, and cool. The yellow, warm, and cool blues, etc. Um, and it just gives you an idea and tells you, um, you know, what they're going to look like. Um, this is the pencil, the pencil in white, the pencil in the blender, and the pencil in the solvent on each one of them. And then she gives you, this is the primary, and this is the secondary colors. And then she gives you grids to test it out yourself. And this is surfaces, what all the pencils look like on different types of paper. We've got 90 pound, 140 pound, 300 pound, 140 pound rough paper, and two ply museum board. You can see the texture and quality of each one of these. So you can, you know, choose what you want. Um, this one is uh, making a reference book. I have one too, but I call mine a swatch book, as many of you do. Let me pull mine out here. We all have our little reference guide. I have mine here where I put all of my markers and prismas and pencils and my... Um, jelly pencils all of them in here so I know right away you can pull it out and see what color I'm going to use and then at 
the front of the book, I started putting different color combos that I like for certain things, different flowers and leaves, um, sunsets, treehouse, sand and sea. And I got a really good um, one for a rainbow. Here's the rainbow one. And I kept all of the names of the colors. Is the continuation of the rainbow. This one is good for mushrooms. Just different combinations that I really, really like. So I've been keeping track of those in my book. Okay, so you can do a reference book and it tells you everything you need and how to get started with that. And what's great is you could make a copy of this and cut it up to use it to put in your, your little reference book if you needed to. And then it tells you how to use it. Homework assignment. Number one, draw your breakfast. Nope, I'm not that good. Can't do that. And then chapter three, aspects of color. And the vocabulary of color. We've got hue, value, and intensity. This is the color wheel. We've got the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. The secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. Um, each is created by mixing the primary colors and then the complementary colors are the two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. It goes into a lot of detail, which I'm not going to read the whole thing. And then we've got the tertiary colors. And you can make your own color wheel right here, which is really cool. And right here, she talks about the importance of your warm and your cool color palettes. And she has a project here where you can do um, one box, you can do primary, secondary, and then the tertiary, whatever order. So you can see the difference in the same picture. Um, this section goes into mixing of colors, which I don't do that much, but it's very interesting. Um, and then she has a project here, mixing 144 colors with just eight pencils, which I thought was really interesting. And the supplies here goes through, you need two reds, poppy and crimson, two blues, true blue and ultramarine, two yellows, canary yellow, lemon yellow, a white pencil, a blending pencil, and a sharpener. The object of this exercise is to fill each square with a different color each created by only using the eight pencils that you have in front of you. You will need to mix each layer in each box. It can be done as you can see on the two completed grids. All right, let's check them out. I was like, how are you going to get 144 colors from eight pencils? But check these out. These are some that her students did and she hangs them up in her classroom. Like this kid did a lot more blending on his, you can tell. And this one did, um, you can see like the lighter yellow underneath and then he just did like hash marks of red and just turned into different, like this one is yellow with the hash marks of the blue made of green. I just thought that was really neat. So I'm gonna do mine over here and see how many, how I fill it out. And then we got the color relationships. The color is only as good as the color next to it. So she goes into detail here about the relationships of color and how they fit together and then the color balance. Color balance equals the amount of color used in relation to another color. All right, and that's these examples. And then right here you have your own places where you can do your own practice, your different palettes the color balance out see how they, they work together and this section is value versus brightness brightness is how vibrant the color feels like you can see you know the warms and the cools just depending on the background of the subject techniques with the colored pencil here we go we've got transparency right here We've got layering and washes. There's a whole chapter on erasing here. This chapter on erasing goes through erasing with scotch tape, erasing with um, the pumice eraser, and this one is the plastic eraser, graphite eraser, kneaded eraser. I mean, this is, it just goes through. There's so much 
detail that I cannot go through in just this one little video. This tells you about masking and coloring, masking fluid. This chapter is on how to apply the masking fluid, which I've tried before and I have had a lot of difficulty with the masking fluid. But um, I'm going to try this with the cherries and try to, it tells you exactly where to put the masking fluid. So when you color your cherry and then you um, peel the masking fluid off, it'll have all the highlights there. Stenciling with colored pencils, impressions with colored pencils, watercolor and wax pencils, Chinese white and acrylic white. This is a different example. Extending the life of your pencil. She tells you how to um, get all that done. And then here you can experiment with all the techniques that are in this book. All right, more paper. She says, forgive me if I'm being redundant, but paper is the most important component of a successful color pencil work. Aren't these flowers beautiful that she colored? I can't even believe they're colored pencils. Her work is beautiful. And then here's some smooth paper and what the pencil looks like. And then we have the rough paper and what the pencil looks like. And then this is uh, colored paper. See how different all the colors look on the different colored paper? They all look different. The mid-tone, the darks, completely different depending on the background. And then how everything looks and how you can achieve this look with black paper. I think this is beautiful. Watercolor blocks, which I didn't get into much because I don't do a lot of watercoloring. Everything you need to know about colored pencils and drawing and all is in this book. This one is about keeping a sketchbook handy so you can um, color in it, draw in it if you want. Here are more pictures from her sketchbook and then she colored them. And here's her homework assignments. These are the homework assignments that you could do, but these are examples are from her, her students. Um, a self-portrait reflected in an object, which would be so hard. A dinner party. The Art of Colored Pencil and ex Exhibition. Here's some more of Lisa's pictures. She just gives examples of different art history. Love these. This is beautiful right here. I love this picture. Just the shading and all is perfect. Highlights and all. And then she gives all the biographies for all of the contributors. Notes on caring and displaying your art. Isn't that cute? How to use photographs. And she does not like people to draw from a picture. She wants you to draw from real life. Because you won't get that depth and perception with a photograph. And she says she can always tell. Um, like I said, it's a really, really nice book. It's, it's handy. It'll come handy. And I'm going to definitely try more of these techniques. I have been reading it and taking some notes. You can see I scribble in it a little bit. But um, I just thought it was very interesting. And 
I just want to thank the publishers for sending it to me. And if you guys like it, check it out. I'll put a link to where you can purchase this at. It's just another book to have that will go handy with your mastering of colored pencils. So, um, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.